Hi guys, Dorota Palicka International, Neil Artis and Educator here and today I'm going to do a very simple set, like I mean I had no time but it's a time to say goodbye to those nails so that's what I had it on, I need to remove this hand as well because you can see the growth is really huge and I had a good question actually regarding those nails is are the crystals, the caviar bits not going to come off or cause the lifting when they're so close to the skin? So basically they have been close to my cuticle, but this part wasn't uh, with the product. So like I had product only applied at the cuticle side without of touching the cuticle. So that doesn't cause, like you can see the growth guys on them. And then uh, today we are going to do a very simple swirly set. Uh, you can guys see it. They're so plain. It was just quickly so I could put some nails on and they have been on for a week now So they don't look the freshest uh, I can even I have even filed the corner of this nail a little bit while doing the clients nails But let me show you how to sculpt those nails and I will try to explain all the things for you And then we will do this pattern. So very quick plain design just to get me through So I've got time to do this hand and then probably I will do a nice set for both of them so I'm starting with cleaning my nail uh, with the nail dehydrator just because I don't want any oils to be massaged into there and push back my cuticles so push them back and scratch the surface of the of the natural nail so just scratch it well so there is no shine at the same time you don't want to overfile it so just scratching it nice Make sure there is no shiny places, file the free edge and when filing the free edge like make sure you have no raggy bits and pieces because uh, when you apply the form it's not going to give you a nice and clean look underneath so like make sure they all gone. Okay, after we have done that I can dehydrate my nail again and remove the dust. So remove the dust, obviously I'm right handed so you guys know this is a struggle doing my right hand with the left hand but hey ho so pull the forms down this goes underneath just to give a bit more support to the form and then i like to pre-pinch my form in between the pink uh, fingers sometimes clients got such as beautiful nails that you don't have to even pinch them you just pre-pinch your form and you get a perfect fit as you can see it i've got wild nails white nail folds uh, so i need to trim my form otherwise it's not going to stick in well so i'm just using a sharp scissors and i've got two options so one option would be to cut the form like this here and here but uh, that works mainly for those nails uh, for high hyponychium we need to also cut this part but for my farm i like to get rid of the entire first row of the form just so i can get a really nice fit so I'm just cutting out the entire fold. Just follow the line really. So get rid of that. I've got a tiny ever hyponychium on my thumb. Hyponychium is the part of the skin which lies directly underneath of your nail and it's protecting your nail beds from infection. So we cannot remove, uh, remove those uh, parts. It can be sometimes sore as well. Now. I've got the form in and now I'm going to apply it underneath of my thumb. Not the easiest task. <laughs> I'm going to trim it also as well on the side a little bit more. Just so I get those perfect fit. And yes, sometimes the form application can take a long time, but... Uh, do not speed it up like do not apply forms messy because the way you apply the form that's the shape of the nail you are getting okay so i have hooked my form and you can see it it goes a little bit up but the reason for it why it goes a little bit up is my nail is going to go somewhere here so i wanted it to be the same height what my nail is if the form would be lower the entire nail will go lower okay so you want this to be at the cuticle height okay this at the cuticle height, not at the height of your nail. So it will look like it goes up. And this way you get this nice straight look rather than the nails which are curving down the way. Okay, once I have hooked the form, I'm going to squeeze it on the sides and here. Yeah. And then start closing the form. And that's my form in. Okay, so we already have got this nice pre-pinch look to the nail. 
And now it's a time for sculpting. So extra nail prep, and that's an extra nail dehydrator. You know, during the foam application, quite often we might touch the nail, and you don't want any oils, any dirt to be on the nail. And then universal air bond. Wait for the nail prep to dry. And the gel which we are going to use, that's actually, that's the light rose uh, fiber gel. So extra nail, uh, universal air bond. And universal air bond is fantastic. It can be used with gels. It can be used with acrylics. It's um, specially designed to work with the nail perfect products uh, for a really nice adhesion uh, of the product to the natural nail. Okay, so let me open this. And light rose is such a beautiful color. Uh, it isn't, I wouldn't call it a cover gel, but at the same time, it is not a normal gel. It has like a very light coverage to it. Uh, so I really like working with it and it has a beautiful color. So let's pick up a scoop of the gel, okay? So one scoop of the gel, look, one side of my brush is totally clear. I've got it only on one side of the brush. Remove it. So you've got very little product at your brush. And then with this little product on your brush, you're going very close to the cuticles and the sides. Okay. If you've got too much product, you are having no control over it. And you need the product to really flash at the cuticle area. You don't want like huge amount in there. You want to be able to blend this nice so you don't know where the natural nail is starting and where the product is okay so i have applied nice and thin layer through my entire natural nail now i can pick up another scoop of the product to build up my free edge so pick up another scoop release it from your brush and then go one side at the joint place here i'm always applying a little bit more product so at the joint place i've got more product on And then go to the letter L, so nice and thin. The form's got the lines, um, so you know how to shape a coffin shape. Now, clean brush and just touch up those wee edges. Get nice and clean looking here. And so those on your other side. I'm really taking my time with this nail, so I don't have much filing because it's a difficult task with your left hand. And then once you're happy with the skeleton of this nail, give it a cook. So the fibers gel cures in 60 seconds in LED light. And I'm going to pinch my nail. In order to be able to pinch this nail, I need to cure it only half of the time. So I'm going to cure it 30 seconds and then apply the pinching clamp. Uh, so the pinching clamp is like a wee tool which is uh, clear uh, so the light can go through it as well and it is actually awesome to get you this really nice and slender look. So a couple seconds longer and then I can pinch it. just in case tap it to see if it's nicely cured and then apply the pinching clamp and cure the rest of the time so another 30 seconds this way you will get a full cure we are also going to get those wee chromy looks, so we are going to use the paint on French gel and some mirror powders. And I'm going to try this one for a change, and that's a Niels Company mirror powder. Um, I have it in my drawer for ages, like once the powders came out, so that's like really years, years now. And I am actually want to try this one out. So that's my nail cook, it's nicely pinched. Let's do build up the apex, because you can see it, the nail is very flat. And if it's flat, it's not going to last a long time. So pick up another scoop. Remove it. Just so you've got control on what you're doing and those important parts like sides and cuticles. 
okay so nice and thin layer of the product don't press too strong with your brush because uh, uh, the stronger you press the less product you leave in there like you can see it i can go really close to the cuticle but very little product in there okay so with this two my time is <laughs> i'm like oh my goodness it have been crazy week but anyway so with this two uh two thin layers i've got enough product at my cuticle area and at my sides i don't want any more product okay and then pick up a large scoop of the product like really really large on the one side of your brush okay one side of my brush let it do a bit from it like you know you want the product to behave on your brush so i've got it on the one side of the brush and place close to the cuticle because you are going to drag it down direct your finger down the way and try to don't overwork the product come on get the control over it okay i get rid of the bit because you need to release it so it's not too strongly attached to your brush and then go one side and other side but don't go too close to the cuticle and don't go too close to the sides because by the time you finish uh, you reach the free edge the product is going to run to the sides and self level okay so you don't need to touch those places I'm more into the middle of the entire needle and I'm what I'm doing I'm not going back too much with my brush I kind of get the additional uh, product from there so get the product and then drag it grab the product drag it okay and you can see it i have applied it more to the middle and that's plenty and i don't have to do anything else because you can see it, the product starts running to the sides if you fussy you can touch it you can touch it there and that's your nail finish cook it so Doing nails this way saves you lots of time. First of all, you have less filing on the sides uh, because they are not as thick. You've got uh, not much product at the free edge and you've got nice and uh, thin cuticle area. So when the nails grow later on, you don't see the growth as much um, and the nails are also lasting better because you're able to blend it well and you have no jumps like you know catchy places because that's what is the biggest problem with the nails if they've got those wee catchy places that's uh, that's when they are going to catch and lift now i'm going to cure a couple seconds longer and then i can give a final pinch to my nails i wouldn't pinch clients nails always only sometimes uh, you uh, you have to watch what type of um, nails you pinch so they don't get damaged <clears throat> okay so just check it pull the form out and then i'm going to pinch from underneath i mean i don't have to even like look how nice uh, nicely pinch this nail is uh, really nice and slim but yeah why not so apply it from underneath only at the free edge now uh, and then i'm going to cook it another 30 seconds to receive the full kill i mean obviously i can see this is taking like so long now one nail uh, it is obviously because i keep explaining the things and show you the things like in a salon is different where you just go fire on you have seen me guys doing a set of the nails like so normally and this is a question you ask me quite a lot as well is how long it takes you to do the full set of the nails so obviously when we're doing a demo nails and we like trying to show you as much as possible and explain the things it takes like at least five times longer so yes yeah, sometimes one nail can take half an hour with a good explanation but uh, in general in a salon i book for like average length like short average nails uh, we book a client an hour and a half and that's include whatever they choose like any kind of design and uh, if someone fancy really long coffee nails uh, with lots of artwork then i like to book two hours uh, myself so i don't have to rush and can make a really good set but yeah it is possible to do a set of the nails in like you know 40 minutes as well and i have been doing it uh, quite often in a salon too 
um, 40, 45 minutes. That my record was actually 36 minutes with the gel polish application. I don't know how I have done it because uh, probably this video will take as much with the one meal and then yeah, you can do a full set. Um, but we always laugh with this lady. Sometimes I use her for videos and you can guys see it like her nails are really easy to work with. But anyway, let's do the shaping now, okay? So we have to um, make the um, side walls nice and even. So I like to always file underneath a little bit. We need to touch the free edge. Okay, so nice and straight. Nice and straight. And then file those coffin shapes, so V-shape. One side. Filing thumb and pinky on your own, especially with your left hand, I think that's the hardest task. Uh, I think that's why maybe I picked it, those nails. <laughs> Just so you can guys see it, I'm struggling sometimes too. But anyway, get those nice V shape, so you can see it, I've got already V shape in here. Then I'm going to blend it around the cuticle area, because I don't want to be able to see the place where the gel is starting. Okay. And the file I'm using is a 100 by 180 grit. Uh, I really like those files. They last me uh, through the entire set and they're nice and sharp. Okay, so you can see it also how the pinching looks in here. It's already looking a bit better. Now let's work on the smoothness of this nail. So I'm just doing the movements like through the entire nail like this. Checking the thickness. So it is actually on the thicker side. Then smooth it the entire nail. Check the thickness. So this side is dropping a little bit. I need to taper it more. And each time when I taper, I need to remove the bulk because like the same, same things happen on the sides like it does uh, when you've got the um, free edge. Uh, when you shorten it, it becomes thicker. So each time when you shorten it or when you reshape your sides, you need to remove the bulk of the product from those uh, areas. So check it. I'm getting there. It's far from perfect, but getting there. I have actually um, done a test, like what will happen if I will take like really, really long time to do one kneel. And what I find it is, doesn't matter how long you take for one kneel, it's never going to be 100% perfect. And I'm talking like about really breaking it down, tear apart, like we do it in the um, judging in the competitions. Um, so we need to learn when to stop so we don't end up over filing the nail. And I'm kind of getting into those places now. So that's me happy with the shape. And the next step I'm going to do it is buff the entire nail. Okay, let's buff it. So the buffer I'm going to use is 100 by 180 as well. And like I've got a wee dent in here, like in some uneven places. So we need to smooth them out. Okay, so first of all, like I'm blending everything around the cuticle and you cannot see it. Like, I mean, guys, let me focus. Ah, sorry. You cannot see it where the product is starting and where my natural nail is. So if you do the nails where you cannot see it, where the product is, they are going to just grow out from your nails. 
they, they properly blend it and uh, they last in cages. And it's funny because I think like dentists sometimes should blend the <laughs> fillings in our teeth the same way so they don't fall out. They need to clean our teeth as well. Like it's a kind of similar thing, don't you think, guys? For those of you who like uh, really doing a nails long, long time, you probably have noticed it as well. So I'm just blending it. Okay, get rid of this dent, but I don't want to make it worse, so I need to keep my um, buffer nice contact, like with this place. That's just getting better. Okay, smooth it the entire nail and then I can just perfect it and then that's us uh, done with it and we can move on into the simple design. I choose the um, swirl work because it's so popular at the moment in a salon like I know it's nothing exciting, it's not a new technique or anything like that uh, but I was just desperate to get my nails done and I hope you like this idea of the design as well so... Okay, that's enough. Maybe. I'm so fussy when it comes to my nails. So my nails take a long time. Like I usually take three hours uh, for my nails. I'm not sure guys how long you take for your nails, but I do take my time. At the end of the day, I'm wearing those nails all the time, so I don't want them to look ugly. Okay, no, but that's enough. That's plenty. Just leave it alone, Dorota. <laughs> Clean it. So I'm using a tiny bit of the blue scrap. Clean this nail nice and squeaky. And then clean this nail nice and squeaky. And let's do the design. So I'm going to use the uh, D-liner brush and tiny bit of the top coat. Actually, we've got this piece from the form which we are going to use. So I'm applying a drop of the top coat. Get those powder ready. And now this is important, you do it this way. You don't do it opposite way, but you do it this way. So first of all, you need to paint with the top coat. And to make the life easy, we are going to start with the more difficult design first and then with the easiest one. Okay, so the more difficult one is when I've got the French. So I'm just picking up a small amount of the product. And then we are going to paint the French. Okay, so just paint nice French. I'm going just to... Oh. Sorry, just had to serve the lady. Obviously, I'm in a salon recording there. But yeah, where have we finished? So we have finished halfway through, which is actually more difficult. But let's do now, so I hope the camera can catch it. So I'm painting with the top coat because I want to apply the chrome pigment where I've got the top coat. And the important part, guys, I wanted to tell you about this design is um, you have to do the top coat part first. Like this is the main task about it. So... Get those French in. Okay, and you can see it, I'm, I'm picking up only very little product on my brush. You don't want to have too much uh, product in there. And then paint those waves. And one more. Paint the wave, and then this nail is going to be very easy because we are not doing a French. We are just painting the waves. That's plenty too, and then cook it. So I'm going to cure it for 
um, 30 seconds and my lamp and then we will wrap those home pigments in there and then we will do the design with the French. You could use any other color of the chrome um, to do those uh, kind of designs, which is awesome, uh, I think. Uh, and I will be definitely using this technique for um, winter time when it comes as well. Like, I bet it will be nice and popular. So I'm cooking those noodles. I have picked up a tiny bit of the chrome powder on my finger. I quite like to apply it with the fingers, especially on my noodles. And now we are going to wrap this in. Okay, so once I wrapped it in, it's showing up what we have painted. And same in here. So wrap it in. To be honest, I actually prefer those uh, those design on the, oh, on the thumb. It looks so pretty, actually. Okay, so I'm just rubbing it in really properly. And then I need to remove the excess of the pigment. Okay, you don't want the top coat to get dirty with the pigment. It just doesn't look nice. So I'm just removing any extra pigments. That's so pretty. I wish now I didn't do the French. Uh, this is so nice <laughs> without a French. Okay, so the next step is to pick up a tiny bit of the paint on French gel. And we are going to paint another line. So I have just picked it up. Clean my brush. You don't want to have bulk of the product on your brush. And then we are going to add a couple squiggles in here. So very nice and thin line. The very difficult task with your left hand. But I keep challenging myself. But I don't think so I could do a French yet. I'm not as well trying with my left hand. For those of you who are watching me a long time, you can guys probably see how how much my work has improved on my using my left hand. Okay, and then I've got next one done <laughs> and the easy one. I should do them all like the farm. It would be so much easier. I mean, the hard part about it is that I'm doing a line close to the previous line. And what they say is when your hands are shaky, do it quick. <laughs> At least my daughter says that. And I think she's right because I took longer for the white. And it's more difficult. Okay, another line is going to go here. No, it doesn't work. Go quick. <laughs> Let's remove it. 
So I have to be careful to don't touch the pigment. That's better. Yay! And I've got swirly pattern on my nails. <laughs> Very plain set for me. Um, but as I say, I wanted it just to keep me going till I've got time to get rid of this hand and uh, do a plain set and then do a rebalance on both of those hands with some nice and beautiful design, more time consuming and uh, more advanced uh, still actually not not the worst set i had i really like the fam like definitely i prefer the fam over the french uh, french look but let me apply the top cut and then i can show you the final look of it yeah so i hope you have guys enjoyed watching me struggle again painting with my left hand and it's funny because actually I produce quite a lot of videos uh, using my left hand. Uh, maybe I try to push myself more because like everything, um, if you practice more, we get better at something. Also, let me know down in the comments below what have been the most popular designs in the last couple few weeks in your salons or with your clients so that's the product top coat over them and i can show you the final look i can see the difference actually they have been a week on and then this one is a fresh uh, so i cannot wait when i can infill them it has been a really really busy time uh, but i'm also happy with them uh, we decided with cameraman we are going live because i have missed really chatting with you guys like you know um answering all your questions as well it has been hectic summer like so busy after reopening and uh, i do really miss those time on the, spent on the youtube uh, so i'm really looking forward to the live video probably by the time cameraman do the post production of this tutorial we will be after the live which is happening tomorrow but i'm sending you lots of glittery hacks and bye for now oh.